Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, this is I don't even know what it is. It's another one. <laughs> it's another, it's another one. one. I think it's part three of what we've talked about. Um, we did a, um, a feature on laying up, which we did a couple of weeks ago, and then we did a follow up to that part two, and this is part three. So this is basically just our findings of what we have learned over the last couple of sessions. So do you want to start with what we've talked about, Tom? Or um, so in terms of like all our laying up sort of things that we thought about, we're seeing people break away from thinking that they're tour players. That's our big thing. Yeah. He's getting so much feedback of everybody watched the TV, everybody spent a certain amount of time this year stuck at home. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you know, we see this and you read an article in a golf magazine, tells you this is where we play to. But the big thing I think we've started to notice with golfers coming back and with what we've been doing over these few sessions is how that doesn't apply to the club player. Yeah. They don't swing a club, they don't swing a pitching wedge at 75, 80 miles an hour. Yeah. They're playing in colder conditions, they're playing different things. They're not, put, yeah. and ultimately when we look at a tour player, they play shots they can play. Yeah. I think that's, you've kind of nailed it on the head with the conversations people have. They watch TV and they're like the American commentators say, oh my God, they're going to lay out to here or whatever. And, that's my American accent. Yeah, <laughs> stroke you got Scottish. It, got stroke into Birmingham as well. <laughs> um, so that's, I would say, is like you said, it's for tour players, people that swing it like that. But the average golf pro, uh, the average golfer, um, doesn't have that swing speed. I'd even say, kind of, our elite golfers here don't kind of do that. I would say. And, it, and also, there's a little bit of, you know, where we we're at is a relatively modern golf course, but it's a British golf course. Yeah. So you're not playing target golf. You're not playing to a number, hitting to a number. Yeah. You're not equally, you know, even you would say me and you, if we're at 100 yards, that could be three different clubs. Yeah. For a club player, Yeah. you know, that's definitely the, the thing. No, you know, even a, a kind of edge of category one, category two golfer, they're not gonna hit their wedge 100 yards every time. So like where we've talked about, not laying up to 100, there, are, there could be some players where that is the ideal shot. Mm -hmm. And that's that thing of gaining the confidence. But for a lot of us back there, you know, I personally wouldn't like 100 yard. Yeah. I'd much rather be 30, 40 yards away. It's yeah. much more comfortable. Well, visually, um, I don't know if we sh showed you footage visually from 100 yards because I put a drone up and then it flew away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a fun bit. <laughs> it wasn't so fun. Um, so we got footage of what 100 yard looked like versus, was it 40 when 40, you did those yeah. pitch shots? Well, it was massively different wasn't it so I think if you're practicing this winter and you're at the golf club and you're using the academy just go around here several times kind of we've got the perfect 50 we've got the perfect 30 60 70 80 and you see it's always interesting watching players around here I do it with the county boys where I'll often say to them right we're going around here local rule you miss the greens out of bounds you've got to be three off the tee sometimes they get to seven nine mm -hmm. off the tee um, but it's interesting 30 and 50, and he, they're, they're relatively comfortable. The 370 yard yeah. holes, yeah. things they are a bit in between shots and, and they struggle with. It. And the lads who do do it well, the golfers who do do that well, tend to be people who are very in control of their, their kind of thoughts of what they're actually going to do, the concept of the shot they're going to play. Yeah. You know, whether it is taking it at a straighter face club and flying it down there or taking more loft or whatever it is. They've got that concept clear in their mind and they play it. And the more and more you go around here, I mean, I would certainly say of all the squads and, you know, during my time here, we've had people like Gary Smith used to come down and bring in quite a few different counties and I think it was at Exeter that used to have around here. And everybody got obsessed with going around here. Yeah. They used to have to have uh, like a, a Wayne's World, we're not worthy thing at yeah. the end, so whoever scored well. Because all of a sudden you get that thing of, all right, I can, on a long hole, if I can get it to there, I can get up and down, or I can make my scores keep going, rather than, all right, that's where I should be, but I'm not really sure I'm any good at that, and I yeah. go on the range and I practice it, well, ultimately, you're not really practicing what you get on the golf course, which is different lies, different contouring, different targets, different yeah. environments in your way that are putting you off, yeah. you know, and, and it's building. Um, so that leads me on to kind of using the academy better, 
Yeah. So the amount of times we do lessons and literally people are stood at the side of the green, three balls, chipping it to one hole. Not many people use this how I would see if I was coming to practice to use it is to actually play each hole so that you can start to work out what club you like the look of, what flight you lo- like the look of, if you want to hit it higher, if you want to hit it lower. Um, the only way you're going to do that is if actually by doing it instead of just magically wanting it to happen, which I find is a... And then the frustration builds, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, people just think, oh, I've, I've practised. Yeah. And they think, oh, I've stood on the range with 50 balls trying to hit to a 50-yard marker. Yeah. And they don't realise how big that dispersion is. Whereas if you're coming around here and you've got one ball with you... Yeah. And you've got to hit the target to get your putter out... Yeah. You're recreating pressure of the golf course. Well, yeah. that's what practice is about, is improving what you do out there, not just hitting 50 golf balls or coming around here with a tube of balls and chipping 20 balls out of that tube. Yeah. There's no get, aim, real aim to that unless it's, oh, I just want to move my muscles today. Yeah. You, know, use this, you can use this space really, really well. So that, in terms of the laying up, what we found, um, just to kind of give you a rundown, we found for us, and again, it might not be the same for everyone because we are all different. For us, the closer to the green we were, the easier it was visually. And then we could kind of plot our way around a little bit better instead of that 100-yard shot. But like Tom said, is some people may like that 100-yard shot and feel comfortable with it. Yeah. And so that might be their bag. But if you don't know what your bag is, how are you ever going to get better at it or kind of practice it or... You then, you then end up guessing, don't you? You're doing stuff on the golf course and you're like, you get wound up with yourself because it's not going well, yeah. but you've not really found, you've not got the concept of what you're trying to do to make it go well. Yeah. That's, you know, that's the key. That's key for all, all shots, really. Yeah. So overall, practice. Practice better. Don't hit 20 balls to a target because there is you don't, you don't get 20 goes at a golf club. Some people might. <laughs> <coughs> um, Try different clubs as well. So mm. as as golf pros, we're always told to start with chipping, with pitching wedges and seven irons, aren't we? Mm. Kind of mix it up a little bit. Because yeah. one of the worst things is that people still think of those old ideas of hitting shot with a certain club. Well, these days, pitching wedges, there is one company that's making a pitching wedge at 38 degrees. Whoa. What, is it, what was an old school pitching wedge when you... Well, when I well and me oh, come on, I'm <laughs> so, now, yeah? so like when we were juniors well, to give you an idea Tiger's pitching wedge is still 49 degrees wow it's a no gap wedge gosh so okay. you don't need a gap wedge if you have a 48 49 degree pitching wedge yeah whereas now I mean both the irons that we play with the pitching wedge is at 45 degrees yeah so now even the gap wedges that most people have are now traditional pitching wedges yeah so I think club selection like you said or we said Anything else that you can kind of think were the main areas that we needed to go through? I think the other thing is people assessing the situation in terms of the ground. Yeah. So what in terms of what in the ground conditions or so ground conditions, the terrain, downslopes, upslopes, because that has a huge change mm. on how your clubs. And the thing I think people ignore hugely is what's happening up here. Yeah. So the rain has started now, which is jolly, um, <laughs> which is sod's law. Um, going on what you were just talking about there, the wind, what that does to the club, someone might hit, let's say, a pitching wedge mm-hmm. a little bit higher than someone else. Yeah. But the other person might watch the flight and say, right, why does mine not do that? And then why can't I hit that? And then they try it and it goes horribly wrong. That comes back down to the individual knowing what they do on average, not the best shot they've ever hit. But what is their their pattern? Pattern. That's what I always pattern. Like to use. Yes. What's your pattern? So, do you know your pattern? Um, if you don't know your pattern, maybe write stuff down when you're practicing. We kind of talked about notebooks today, um, video footage, using launch monitors. These are all bits that are really helpful when we practice because we can see data, and we can see outcomes, can't we? You're getting feedback. You know, yes. that's a lot of times what I think our job is as coaches. Yes, we, we you know we both spent a lot of time learning the ins and outs of golf, but it's, a lot of times it's about giving people some accurate feedback on what yeah. they've done. Um, so if you did watch the video, it was really nice. Some of the feedback that we got. If you see, we're a lot stiller today because we've got a <laughs> tripod. <laughs> yeah. 
Yay! Um, don't know what the sound's going to be like, but we'll give it a go. Right. It's all right. You've just not had a vodka today. Yeah, so just not right. had a vodka, not had a gin. I've had a coffee, so I'm all good. Um, what was interesting is the conversation I've had from people who said, what if you don't have confidence in hitting that shot? What if you don't have confidence in your fairway woods or hitting it that longer yeah. shot? Um, and then down to the ability of the golfer that was the other one the ability of the club golfer whether they're off of 18 or 45 obviously their golf is very different yeah so it's it's as the golfer as an individual how if you were off of a 30 handicap how would you go through that process of shots so my thing first of all is, is build build that confidence from the, the whole back to the tee so start looking back and thinking right okay if i look at this look at this hole now look all the way back to my eye how does it look like I could get to this ball to this hole in a good number of shots so straight away that starts to give us because a lot of times you're when you're still looking from the tee forward it's kind of you see everything that's in the way you see a bunker or a tree or a pond that actually isn't necessarily in play yes but you think you've got to play around or you've mm -hmm. got to play for yeah and it, or equally you can look back and you can start to say oh all right there's there's a way around that bunker there's a way you know where we played that hole and we were hitting over that greenside bunker and you started thinking okay i might be from you know sort of junior for example from kind of seven, 60 70 yards that might even be an eight or a nine iron for them mm -hmm. which they might not be confident hitting over a bunker so you start thinking okay well when i look from that flag if i just hit it over to that right hand side i'm going to be okay i can build my confidence and the big thing also is, is making a decision. You know, it's it doesn't have to be textbook. So, I mean, how many of you out there have kind of chosen a shot and you're stuck between two clubs or stuck whether do you go lower or do you go higher and then you do neither and then you duff it and then it does your head in and then you think you're rubbish at that shot and then you lose confidence and then you don't play golf for a while. That didn't happen to me, it did a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. But I think that's that's when you start to see people lose confidence. Is it's not clear. You've talked about concept. Yeah. It's not clear on them what the concept of is is of that shot, or maybe it's a technical thing. But it's just to choose one club and one shot instead of having a whole array of them, which we do. But just commit to that one shot. Mm. Yeah, give yourself give yourself that chance. You know. Um, so just to give you a rundown. Mm. We've talked about our findings. Mm going shorter visually Me? easier yeah we talked about making sure you pick your the club of your choice what you feel most comfortable with it mm. um the video that we did when we didn't necessarily go at the flag it might be picking a different part of the golf course yeah. instead of going directly at the flag it's easier giving yourself more more wide a bigger bigger target yeah and then maybe like you said looking back so when you go and play let's say you go and play the badminton or the front line or whatever when you're stood on the green actually look back and see what that hole looks like for you. Does it look as tricky as it does off the tee? Um, might you want to play it slightly different and make notes on it instead of doing the same thing all the time? Anything else you want to add before we finish on part three? I would, I would say a big thing for all golfers is, um, something I got told a few years ago, try and be a five-year-old. Five-year-olds aren't afraid of making mistakes. And it's amazing how many times if you let yourself make a mistake, you usually do okay. Yeah. Whereas if you kind of stand there and, oh no, I might not hit this shot good because it's this, it's because it's that, you're bringing all those other possibilities in it. Whereas equally, if you go up to a shot and you think, this is new, don't know quite how it's going to go, but I'll give it a go, you're giving yourself that chance. Because the, the, always one of those possibilities is the shot will go perfect. Yes. So give yourself that chance don't kind of have that fear give yourself a chance let let yourself have a go at stuff you know it's that that's one of the great thing about when you teach young kids like you see with the, little, with the young yeah, girls is how much they they kind of just jump up yeah and whereas once we get a bit older we've got like a bit of scar tissue of we've got been told this is wrong and this is wrong become a five-year-old again play like five-year-olds that's my that's my yeah. Raise on death for these days. And they don't really care if it's perfect or not. It's just getting from point A to point B, which I know for a fact I've done some playing lessons and the ball is finished in the absolute perfect place, but the person has raged because it went a little bit lower than they expected or it didn't feel as good or it didn't sound as good. So I think the reality is golf is based on numbers and if you're here not for that, I don't know what you're here for. 
um, but it doesn't have to always be perfect to get from point A to point B. So, hope that helps. Um, that's us done for today, isn't it? Sorted. And, and the sun's even and come the sun out. has just come out just as it started raining. Can so, get out um, six legs. next video, next video we are doing um, is Tom's going to talk a bit of technical setup with pitching and chipping. That's quite an interesting mm. subject for people because short game following on the laying mm. up is really important, isn't it? Yeah. And I think we have got the perfect practice facility for it. So, if you want to see that, that is the next video, and it will be pitching and chipping setup. So. Thank you. Take care.